we played a tough schedule this year. You know, we played four top 25 teams. You know, if things could have worked out, if Notre Dame got in, we would have played two final four teams. You know, but nobody really talks about that. They just see a record. <laughs> but, you know, we played some tough people. So I knew we would be prepared for this game because we've been in the furnace, man. We've been playing some tough teams and just really, really proud of our seniors. Ken, can you, hey, Coach, can you address the, the, field, the uh, fake punt at the end? We heard from the television uh, interviews with Diego and yourself that apparently it was not a call play. Uh, sometimes it's good to be lucky. Uh, <laughs> a little miscommunication there, but you know, players got to make plays, and uh, I didn't know we were going to do it either. And so I just looked at Coach Coniglio. I mean, you know, Coach Coniglio, you know, he's, he's been doing our punt team, did a great job, but thank goodness it, it worked. What can you say about what Diego did there? Because we saw upstairs that it almost hit his helmet because obviously he didn't know it was coming, but he makes an incredible catch and then breaks a tackle, jumps over a guy. I mean, that's effort. Players make plays. You know, and he made, I mean, that was a heck of a play. And, but, you know, I, I probably got a little too anxious on some other plays. Probably, a little, you know, we were really aggressive in a lot of stuff. But we were going to come out swinging. You know, we were going to come out swinging. We were going to be on attack mode from the beginning. Um, you know, our, our toughness has come into, been, been called into question. And I've been doing this a long time. Our guys on our team are some of the toughest people in this world. So, that's the wrong people to challenge their toughness. Yes. Ken, just to make sure uh, to be accurate, was the play in, was the fake in? Uh, we were kind of trying to yell. Um, I didn't know we were going to do that. You know what I mean? We are kind of yelling. I'm yelling at Conegli, but you couldn't hear yourself think. You know, we got all these signals, and our signals got mixed up. And, you know, he was making a call, and you know, then it wasn't supposed to happen. We, we got lucky, but like I said, um, it's good to be lucky, too. Ken, you, I mean, you've told us uh, about the team. What about uh, a lot of creativity today? We saw the reverse. We saw the double reverse. They were both all successful for you. How, how much extra effort you put into that? We were going to come out swinging. You know, just so we were just going to come out swinging. We are just like, uh, we've been hearing a lot of stuff that the tables have turned and that they're on top. We've never felt that. Um, I just never felt that way. You know what I mean? I think they're a really good football team. Um, but our schedule's tough. I mean, are we, we, we and, and it was by design, and, um, yeah. Right, right there. Coach, first of all, congratulations on the win. So after the first possession where Army marches down the field, they get a good pass off about 14 yards, then the quarterback takes it 54 for the score. What was the message to the defense, and where do you think you guys adjusted the best to what Army was giving you after that? Oh, we just, you know, we just fitted it wrong. You know what I mean? Just kind of we got a little bit over bumped to the – to the heavy side, so they came, they ran, you know, the midline, two-way midline out the back and just our fits on that. But Coach Newberry is a great defensive coach. We got that fixed. But it was so early in the game, we had a long ways to go. I mean, you don't flinch. I mean, that that, that happened so early. Probably it was good that it happened that early because it kind of settled us down a little bit. And then after that, you know, I thought we played really well on defense. Hey, congrats. Um, you know, Ty most of all, but there were so many young players today who stood out. Can you just speak to how bright this future is for this? The team? future of Navy football is bright. I mean, like I said, we played some tough people, man. We were up on Cincinnati. We, you know, scored first. We were up on, on Houston, 17-7, SMU, 21-7, playing with some young guys in there. And um, the future is bright, you know. I think we finished with the third toughest schedule in, in college football. I wanted a tough schedule, but not that tough. I'd, I'd be okay with the 40s or in the 50s or in the 60s, but not third. And I don't think our schedule is going to be as tough next year. We got a ton of guys coming back. The future is very, very bright because the foundation has been laid by our seniors. Kareem, and then can you say a few words about Ty and the tone that he set on that first touchdown run? I mean, he got blasted by two guys and still pushed from the, I think, two, three yard line to score and uh, kind of got things rolling. Well, the thing I told him that he beat Naps when he was at, at the prep school. So I just remind him, hey, man, when you're the quarterback at Naps, you beat Naps. So bring that experience with you. You know, we had some packages in there with Xavier, and he looked great. Unfortunately, he pulled his hamstring. 
But to Ty's credit, man, Ty played his butt off. Really, really proud of the kid. He had great composure, and I thought he played really, really well and played physical and tough, which you know, Coach Jasper is the best quarterback coach in the country, and he's got him right. He's got him and Xavier right. They, they did a really good job. Coach, you mentioned Coach Jasper. Obviously, the situation with him earlier this season was a rough start to the season. But to have it end like this, just what is it like to put a cap on it? Unbelievable. So, so happy. So happy for these seniors. Like, we're here in this press conference. We're here at this game. You know, my seniors, a lot of them will be serving overseas, and they'll be protecting our country in a couple months. So that finality of that, the reality of that, is never lost on me, you know, being here for 24 years. And so you just want it so bad for them. And, yeah, it started off rocky. But to end this way, it doesn't get better than this. This is what everything in our program is about, to beat those guys in football. After this, you know, we'll serve together. But on this day, we have one goal, and that's to crush Army. Um, Coach, another play that I thought really spoke to the determination of your team was when Chance took the reverse, and it wasn't there. He was supposed to pass, I could tell. It wasn't there, and he ran it. And he ran into Andre Carter, who's like 75 pounds bigger than him, and he ran him over and got another 12, 15 yards. What I wanted to make sure this week, you know, as we talked as the staff, is we talked about touches. We had to make sure that certain guys got touches, and he was one of them. You know, you know, he's got to get this amount of touch. He's got I mean, he's one of our playmakers. And so we were going to go down swinging with our, our players. We were going to, you know, make sure that our guys, we took shots at them, and it was an unbelievable play. I mean, he did the same thing at SMU. You know, ran over a guy, wasn't blocked well, but Chance has been a baller, you know, the whole, year, or the whole time he's been here, and just happy for him he could finish that way. There. Coach, um, obviously the West Points in New York, New York, Naval Academy's in Maryland, you know, the game's pretty much in the middle for players on your roster and Amy, or, um, Army's roster to be on the East Coast. What's it like to have those players, you know, be close to home? And you mentioned your seniors. 10, 10 20 years from now, what's the one thing you're going to remember most about those guys? I mean, I see them come back all the time. I've been here long enough that I've seen them come back. I see them come back as fathers and husbands to their kids. That's how long I've been here. And so that is a reality to me. I see them serve. Most of them serve and get out. Some stay in. But it's, it's a great reality check for me that, yes, I'm a football coach in Division I football. Division I football is ruthless. You see how many guys get fired? <laughs> I mean, this is a ruthless profession. And, but I've been very, very fortunate to coach these guys. are the, the greatest kids. My wife told me the other day we were coming back. He goes, honey, you got the best players. They're like all great young men. I said, honey, yes, they are. I'm so fortunate. My locker room is filled with such great, great people, and I couldn't be more happy for them. Last question for Coach with Graham, and then we'll bring the offensive guys up. Coach, quick question. Talk a little bit about the defense and your pass coverage. I mean, Morris came up with two big plays, and you had some other uh, defensive pass coverage as well. Uh, that was a big factor. I don't know what they threw at him. I mean, he's, he's our best corner. I mean, the guy's been balling out for four years. I mean, he's seen some of the best receivers in our conference. I mean, he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with elite receivers in our conference. I was okay with them trying to throw the ball against Mikey. You know, yeah, take your chance on him, man. Uh, I was happy they threw it over there. You know what I mean? And so if there's anybody that, you know, they throw it to in those kind of situation, uh, I'm at total peace and Mikey McMorris is guarding them. Can you just take us through that final snap? You take that knee and you pass up and wave. You know, what, what was that moment like for you? Um, I mean, I think it's everything that uh, we worked for throughout the whole season. Uh, your, the motto the whole year is beat them. Um, and I think just all the emotions of all the work we put in um, together, all the blood, sweat, and tears we put in uh, just came out at that last, that last snap. So it was a great moment. Chance, I'll ask you about the same play I asked Coach. I mean, it just, to me, that showed determination. When you ran through Andre Carter, you were not going to be denied. What does that show the rest of the team? Yeah, uh, like you said, you, you, you could tell like, I was trying to pass it to Ty. I guess he's just a little bit slow, so um, couldn't really get open there. But um, yeah, um, I knew my options were, my opportunities were limited in this game. I knew that I, when I got the ball, I had to make the best of it, um, just because of how the nature of the game is going to be. Uh, so so few plays on offense. Um, so I just I wasn't going I wasn't going to allow him to you know to hinder me in any kind of way. Um, 
Shout out to Ty. He threw a, threw a big block if you watch the replay. Coop always is blocking downfield. Did a great job of extending the play a little bit longer. Um, just really thankful for the coaches just trusting me with the ball. Uh, you know, on fourth and four, I like that to make a play regardless of, you know, the opportunity. So really grateful. Richard and Catherine. Did any of you guys realize what was going on during the punt? The, the fake punt? Um, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the punt team, and um, it it wasn't supposed to be a fake. <laughs> it, we were supposed to punt it, um, but heads up, played by Diego. I mean, that just speaks to him as, as a player. His head's always in the game. Uh, didn't panic for a second. Still from a guy to the ground and hurl over another one. It's like we might as well come play. Be, be back next year. We get a fifth year or something like that. But no, I, no like, nobody knew it was gonna happen. Um, we ha we had some in there like that, similar to that play, um, but it was going to be called that, and we didn't call it at all. The snapper just snapped it to Diego, and Diego made a play. So, but yeah. Ty, I mean, there were some frustrations early in the season to show off the way you did today, to show so much growth over this season. What did it just feel like every time you threw a successful pass, every time your offense worked? Um, I mean, I think. Uh, just overall, it shows the nature of our, our offense. Um, we never gave up. Uh, there was tough times. Um, but, I mean, we all trust and need each other. We've been working out with each other all summer, uh, all spring. Um, I mean, Pierce and the whole line, they've gone through a lot more than I have. They've basically come down to the 5 alignment we have up front. Uh, and they've been battling all year. And they just made it uh, possible for me to be able to do the th things that I could do today. So. First of all, congratulations on the win, guys. Uh, this question's for anyone who's uh, comfortable with answering. It's kind of a two-part question. So this has been a character-building year for sure. So how rewarding is it for it to end on a win like this? And how hopeful are you for the future of this program? Do you feel you're leaving it on the off on the right note, leaving it leaving it with the seeds for the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I told somebody after the game, it's been a rough year. Um, you know, nobody wants to be 3-8 and eight going into the last game of senior year or as a player on the team in general. but. We played some tough games. Um, and one thing I'll say about this team is that nobody hung their head. Uh, nobody came to practice and sulked. Um, everybody, you know, touched the line every single day and gave it everything they had. And that just kind of propelled us into the last couple of games of the season um, and, and allowed us to come out on top this year. And, you know, I was just on the field with the, with the younger A-backs just now, took a picture or whatever. I told them it's on them now. Um, you know, Pierce and I, Diego, Jarius, Mikey, our time's over here. Um, you know, we, we gave everything we had to this program. Um, but it's now it's now guys for like Ty, um, Mikhail Haywood, just all the younger guys to just take over um, and step up into the role that that, that we're leaving. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're leaving in a better place than uh, than we got it. Um, but we'll see. Uh, spring ball's coming up soon. So. What's the biggest lesson you'll take? And, uh, Phil Bergman. Uh, guys, can you just walk us through that moment. What did it feel like when the clock hit zero and you guys sang second? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's something we dream of. You know, <clears throat> that's the reason why I came to the academy is you know have that feeling. Um, you know, right now I'm speechless, to be honest with you. you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here with my brothers, you know, go through all the tough times we've gone through and, you know, end like that. So it's a great feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Just going off going off what Pierce has said, um, you know, kind of sophomore year, we kind of gave it to him handedly, 31-7. Um, so we didn't, it wasn't like the same, I guess, spunk at the end. Um, but this one being so close and, and coming down to the wire and Diego having to make a stop on fourth and five, and you know we, we take three knees to end the game. It just it just made that moment uh, that much more cherishable. You know, just being on the field on those last couple of plays and just soaking it all in. Um, it's an amazing feeling. Like Pierce said, that's why you come here. That's why you play this game. That's why this game is the biggest rivalry in college football uh, for moments like that. So you know, we wouldn't change it for anything in the world. What changed in the What changed in the second half for you as opposed to the first half? Um, I, I I think you know just I think nerves started to settle in. Um, you got a lot of younger guys playing on both sides of the ball, um, guys that haven't played many snaps in this game, an Army Navy football game in general. Um, so we didn't change anything offensively. Ran the same plays, uh, did the same stuff. I think guys just started to settle in, and guys just started to realize, hey, we're in this game. Um, this is our game to win. This is our game to go take. Uh, and this is what we did. Uh, we can kind of see those guys on defense start to wear out a little bit, get tired, and that's when we put our foot on the gas. Last question for the offense. Ty, is it in the playbook that Harris picks you up and carries you over the goal line? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Uh, but, um, I mean, I think it just shows uh, how everyone here is trusting the other person. Uh, I could have easily probably – I was thinking about jumping. Um, Good thing I didn't jump because I probably wouldn't have got where I was. But uh, I mean, uh, every person on that team has has each other's back, and I think that shows uh, tremendously there. So. Diego, just start off by talking about what happened on the fake punt.
we heard your CBS interview after the game. They didn't know it's coming, so just walk us through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, so they, they showed uh, six people on the right, two on the left, and uh, we checked like an overload because, I mean, that, that's basically an overload um, in that situation. I was supposed to block the closest guy to the snapper, and so I was kind of looking in that direction. And when I checked it, I guess the snapper didn't hear me correctly. And we have we did have a uh, fake in the, in the uh, game plan. We were talking about it already. And so he, I guess he assumed that um, – that I called the fake and he just snapped it to me and it was just a reaction play. Honestly, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it, but yeah. Well, it's funny because he's, if you cut inside, you might have gotten it easier, but you made it hard on yourself and ran right through the guy. But you broke the tackle, you hurt the guy, and you just tell, tell us. You... Yeah, I mean, as a linebacker, you kind of already have tunnel vision, so <laughs> I wasn't really expecting it. So when I caught it, uh, I just, I, I just started running straight, and it just so happened to be right in front of one guy. So, so originally you were just trying to get the staff's attention and say, hey, like, we've got this. Yeah, we, we were kind of checking the pr protection because they gave us a certain look. And uh, because, like, once I checked it, the snapper must have mis skewed something. And so he snapped it to me instead. Uh, Two-part question for any of you guys. Did any of you guys, when you saw your teammates, did you guys thought about jumping in the stands? What was going through your mind when the clock hit zero? And I asked this to Coach earlier, you know, having this game in the middle between the academies, what's it like to be close nearby to have this game on the East Coast? Yeah, I feel like <clears throat> when the clock hit zero, we were just also, also full of emotion, uh, especially me, like, I feel like we play with on a D line. We play with just a nasty disposition and uh, that fuel and with inside. So we kept. I kept telling our guys on the defensive lines like never <clears throat> get too uh, high, get too low. Uh, so when the clock hit zero, we knew we won it, and we just we just went crazy. Richard, were you involved in the stop sort of Armin's last offensive play as well as you were? Yes. Yeah, I was as long like along with everyone else who was on the field. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to be rude. I was just. <laughs> I was on the other end zone. I couldn't really tell. Diego and Jacob Busick got credit for the tackle on that. Correct. Right here. Mikey, you, uh, you had this stop on uh, Buchanan. I've seen four or five players try and bring him down, and, and he keeps going. You grab onto his foot like a bear trap. Can you take us through that play? Yeah, I mean, I saw uh, Diego jump over the line. <laughs> And the b back was so common, I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> Here it goes. So I know I'm not going to bring him down up high, so I went straight for his legs. And just holding on for dear life, waiting for the rest of my teammates to come. So I knew I had, at that moment, I had the brotherhood in my head, so I wasn't letting go. That was it for that play. I'd like to ask any of you guys who want to answer this. I mean, they scored on the 54-yard run or 56, whatever it was, in the fourth play. Then they gained a total, they had a total of 232 yards, which is a season low for them. What was it that all worked today? Yeah, they, they, one of their things is they, they say that they're the last of the hard. And um, quite frankly, like, we took that to heart. And, you know, like, they, they think their, their culture is better than ours. And you can clearly see how, you know, that they scored in the opening drive and they thought it was going to keep going their way throughout the whole entire game. But, I mean, we're not gonna like we're not gonna lay down for them, and so I, I think I think we were just consistently coming back, coming back, coming back, and it, and it, and it ended up in our favor. Um, so I don't really know if they're really the last of the hard. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Two part question for me. So you know, when you went on the field with the for the three minute drive at the end of the game, do you guys have a special message for the team? And the other one is, do you feel you're leaving this program on the right note? And what was the best lesson you took from this season, a character building year? Yeah, so <clears throat> I don't think our message was any different. Uh, I know we went to the sideline, and, and uh, Diego and I got together, and we just kind of told the defense just keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, don't try to do anything out of character, uh, out of your way. Do your job, like Coach Newberry always says, burn a key, burn a uh, key, burn an eye through your key, and literally just play through your guy. So win those one-on-one -on -one battles, and everything will take care of itself. David, not to flavor the point on the, the fake pop, but coaching here earlier, you know, responsive essentially. Sometimes it's, it's better to be lucky. Um, at the end of the day, though, you're a football player. I mean, you're, you work on instinct. You made the play happen even though it wasn't by design. How is that kind of just emblematic of the way you approach every single day in this program? 
Yeah, I think to be honest, um, <clears throat> I, I don't think the ball's really bounced our way the whole entire year. Um, I think for once it did. And I, I mean, I don't really know how else to explain it. I mean, I, I just react. I mean, I just reacted and, and just kind of played ball. Do you have any background as a pass catcher? Or <laughs> no, I went to a small private school in uh, Fort Lauderdale. I played offensive line in high school, so I didn't. I've never, I've never really touched the ball. <laughs> what was different in the second half compared to the first half, and how important was it to have the lead when you came on defense for the first time after halftime? Uh, nothing was. Nothing was really different. Um, I think we were, we had a, a lot of young guys playing, so we were all, they were all playing with nerves, and so were we. Uh, we just had to get, <clears throat> we just had to get everybody together and and remember it, it is a game at the end of the day, and lock in on your keys like we always said, and get the job done. Play with an athlete at this position. Grand and Wax. Michael, talk to me. You had some great pass coverage. You had two big plays. Uh, talk to me a little bit about um, pass coverage. What did the games before teach you, uh, and how did they prepare you for today? I would say, I'd say the games before, like just going against like, I don't know, like teams that are very reliant on the pass and like very high school receivers doing double moves and other certain kind of stuff. When we got to Army, it was just like. They just like there wasn't any double moves or anything. It's just whatever they're doing, you're doing. You can react as fast as you can, and this is very helpful. You know, going against uh, receivers in our conference like that, and then coming to Army playing their receivers. Wax. Well, Diego, just wrapping up. Uh, can you talk about the defense in the second half? You, I think Army had three total first downs in the second half. I don't know what the artist numbers was were, but you shut them out by a lot. Can you talk about what the defense did in the second half to shut them down? Yeah, again, it kind of goes back to that culture piece. I mean, like, <laughs> to be honest, we've faced a lot of adversity this year, and guys keep consistently coming back and, and, and battling and not giving up. And so, um, especially in the second half, regardless of the score, we're going to keep playing as hard as we can, and and we and we pride ourselves on that. Um, I mean, I, I can't say enough about how they think they're the last of the hard, but it's, it's just not the case. They're our little brothers. <laughs>